Good morning, YouTubians. It's Kermit's Ghost. It's Monday, the 4th of April, and it is grim outside today. It's pouring down with rain at the moment. It's windy out there as well, and it's quite just grim in general. So I'm going to take the car up to town, see what's out. There's quite a few films out, I believe. Hopefully, HMV will have them all in stock. I'm going to grab a coffee from McDonald's, not a sponsor, and then I'll take you home and show you what I picked up. I want to say happy birthday to Blu ray Bullet Brit, old Pete, 21 again. Looking good. And. I'm going to show you some subscriber mail, some films that I sourced from a fellow YouTuber, Instagrammer, Gary. He's sourced me some unofficial releases and also did a trade with a fellow Instagrammer as well. So, going to be quite a few titles to show you. So, let's head up in this rain up to town and see what's out. I'll see you all in a bit. Okay, so I'm driving through the Old Steen at the moment in Brighton and on the left-hand side is St. James's Street next to that subway there. Up on the right hand side we're approaching the Royal Albion Hotel which was designed by Aaron Henry Wilds in 1826 and as we come up to the roundabout on the left hand side you're going to see the aquarium, Brighton Aquarium which was designed by Eugenius Birch, brilliant name, in 1872 and that took three years to complete. Then straight ahead we got the Royal Palace Pier, 1722 feet long, opened in 1899, the same year my grandmother was born. There it is right there with the clock. And as we come off the roundabout, up on the right-hand side is a place called Pool Valley. That is where, if you come by coach or bus, you will end up in Brighton. And just a little bit further along, you'll see Pier 9, which is now a casino, but it was a Canon Cinema. And as we go past that, we'll see East Street, which was where the big fight erupted in Quadrophenia. Everybody was arrested. And then further up here, we've got this Blue Glass Hotel, which is Jury's Inn, formerly known as the Thistle Hotel. And before that, it was the Ramada Renaissance. But right now, on the right-hand side, is the Old Ship Hotel, believed to be the oldest hotel in Brighton. Built in 1559, and it belonged to Richard and John Gillam, but it was a private residence. It didn't open as a hotel till 1665. And that's where I'll leave the commentary. Up ahead, you can see the I-360, the observation pole. And I will see you all in McDonald's. See you in a bit. So here I am in McDonald's. Going to have a bit of breakfast, and this is a cheese flatbread. It's got cheese near and bacon it's actually nicer than it looks i gotta say mcdonald's have put their prices up it's an extra 10p for my large latte but hey -ho, what can you do there it is the beautiful coffee itself no other like it quite quiet in in uh, mcdonald's today and brighton in general it is as you can see 8 59 9 o'clock time for hmv to open their doors so here we go the shutters are up and we're going to find out what has been released today over to the new and trending, as you can probably see as I'm approaching, Spider-Man No Way Home has been released today on many different formats. So let's take a look and see what they've got. So the first title to show you is Spider-Man No Way Home. Several ways to get this today, and that's not even including Steelbook exclusives that you can get from Zavi and the likes. First one here is the Blu-ray, priced at $14.99. Then we have the DVD here, priced at $9.99. Comes on... 4K as well as other sets which I will show you in just a second. Here is the 4K. Doesn't seem to be a slip cover with any of these. Released through Sony. $24.99 there for the 4K. And incidentally if you do get the 4K you get this free poster with it today. Film is 148 minutes. There's also this trilogy set which is available on Blu-ray. That's quite a busy spine I would say on that one. And quite busy on the back. $19.99 for the combo of the blu-ray here is the dvd all seem to have very similar artwork again very busy there i think this was priced at 14.99 or you can go for the 4k trilogy and this is priced a whole lot more at 59.99 next we have the paramount pictures release of infinite this is released on blu-ray dvd and 4k blu-ray is priced at 14.99 it's from 2021 this one and i believe it was an amazon prime exclusive the DVD priced at $9.99. It's 106 minutes, this one. Stars Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg, Chewy Tail, Edgy Fall, and Sophie Cookson. And here is the 4K priced at $24.99 today. And I can't see any slipcovers with any of these today. Next, we have an anime release of Demon Slayer Mug and Train. This is from Funimation Entertainment from 2020. 117 minutes. No 4K for this today. There are two Blu-rays. This one here, just a standard release, $18.99. There's also a limited edition, which they didn't have on the shelf that was priced at 50 pound and they've also got this dvd priced at 14.99 does come with a nice slip 
Also ranked today is the 4K Blu-ray combo of Dear Evan Hansen. This is a few Dazzler Media from 2021, 137 minutes. You're also 18.99. The Blu-ray came out last month on the 21st. Over in the Criterion section now, and we have the release of In Cold Blood. This is from 1967. It's 135 minutes long, directed by Richard Brooks, and based on a book by Truman Capote. Yours for £17.99. Next, we have a vertical films release called The Believer from 2001. This is 102 minutes, carries a 15 certificate, and stars Ryan Gosling about a Jewish man who has anti-Semitic views, priced at £14.99. Over in the war and western section now, we have two releases today, one war, one western. First one is Gift Horse from Studio Canal from 1952, 100 minutes, priced at $14.99, comes with a lovely slip, stars Dickie Attenborough. The other one is the western, Rio Conscious, put out by Signal One Entertainment, this is from 1964, and it's 107 minutes long, starring Richard Boone and Stuart Whitman. Yours for $14.99. And the last thing to show you is in the television section, and it is Trigger Point, a mini-series comprising of six episodes starring Vicky McClure and Adrian Nestor. It's about bomb disposal officers, and it's a crime thriller priced at £16.99 and rated a 15 certificate. Hey everybody, welcome back. Quite a bit to get through as you can see here, plus they've just started roadworks right outside my house, so... I'm going to crack on and hopefully won't be disturbed too much. Okay, so we're going to start with the subscriber mail. I've taken my address off, as you can see. I know it's wrong because it says on the back, Phil 4K Baker. And I'm going to open this up, see if there's a note inside. I'll do some editing because you don't want this to go on forever. Looks like there's quite a lot in here. It's quite a big box. I know of a couple that Phil has sent me. So what I'll do is I'll show them first after I've read the note, and then I'll cut. I'll go and read up a bit about these titles, and then I'll come back to you and give you a little bit more of an insight as to what Phil has sent me. So let's crack on with it. So inside is Z-Note. Let's have a look, see what Phil's written. Hi, Alan. Hi, Phil. As promised, a few Blu-rays, documentaries. Hope you find them interesting. I'm sure I will. L Street Disc is full of extras. I think you'll find it full of Star Wars information. Fantastic. I've also put in a steel book that you haven't got. He's mentioned something here I won't say. Uh, thank you again, Alan. All the very best for 2022. Phil 4K. Fantastic. Thank you. I will put that to one side and have a look inside. So first one out of the box is what he mentioned in the note. It is a slip cover for Taboo. He's put something inside there. Come to that in a second. I have the TV show, didn't have the slip. I don't usually keep slips on my films, but I do when it comes to TV shows. I'm missing quite a few slips actually, but this is fantastic. That is work of art. It's all embossed there. Great show, by the way. Tom Hardy is in this, fantastic. I'll put that to one side so I don't want to get that damaged. There's Daring Young Men in their jaunty jalopies and Houdini, double feature Tony Curtis. I will come back to that in a bit. So that is fantastic, fantastic. Let's put that to one side. Okay, delving deeper into the box, and we have Elstree 1976. Brilliant. Looking forward to watching that for sure. I knew you were going to send me this one. Fantastic. Thank you. I will come back to that in just a second. This is quite overwhelming. Superman, the complete animated series. This is just unbelievable. Um, that someone would take their time to send me something like this. Uh, it really is quite, um, it's quite something, it's something else. It really is something else. I'll come back to this one in just a second as well, as I will with all of them. Another one, I have no idea this was gonna be sent, A Walk in the Sun. Look forward to uh, looking up about this one and giving you some information on it. Okay, here we go. This, this feels like a steel book and it is. Blimey, look at that, Fahrenheit 451. I didn't have this in my collection, I do obviously now, but uh, wow. Like people people really cherish steel books. I don't have a big collection of steel books, so I maybe have like half a dozen, so that will go pride of place with those. And there's still more in here. And the last one in the box is black and white. Harry and Snowman. I know nothing of this, so I will 
look all these up and then I'll come back and give you a little bit of information on it. Thank you so much in advance, Phil. This is far beyond what you said you were going to send me. It, it's just amazing. Thank you. So, <laughs> quite overwhelmed. First thing that Phil sent me is a double pack and uh, you've got the Daring Young Men in their jaunty jalopies and I never thought, well I thought I'd never heard of this or seen it but it turns out that was the American title whereas I remember it as Monte Carlo or Bus. It's a sequel to Magnificent Men in their flying machines and I've not seen this probably since the 70s. It's from 1969, set in the 20s, has a great cast. You've got Tony Curtis, Terry Thomas, Susan Hampshire, Peter Cook, Dudley Moore's in this as well. Jack Hawkins and Eric Sykes as well and many many others it's a story about a one and a half thousand mile rally which was filmed in the United Kingdom Italy and France so great locations very similar to the film The Great Race which I uh, have already and I know that was based on the wacky races follows it in that kind of fashion absolutely chuffed to have this in the collection thank you so much brilliant the other film on this double feature is Houdini. It's a biopic telling the story of Harry Houdini, the, the famous escape artist. And it's made in 1953, but it does start out in the 1890s. And it stars the brilliant Tony Curtis, great actor. I've always admired his work. And of course, he is Harry Houdini in this film. You've got Janet Lee, his love interest. In real life, they were actually married two years at this point, I think, three years before they had their daughter, Jamie Lee Curtis. It tells the story of how Harry becomes famous and the struggles he had to face becoming a household name as well as the problems he had with Bess, that's uh, Janet Lee's character, and uh, how they overcome that. This is the first of five films that they made together, directed by George Marshall, who's also directed Lauren Hardy a few times. It's an amazing double feature. Thank you so much. I will treasure this. I'm actually, it's a double disc. It's a double disc, so what I'll do is get a cover printed for each one and they will go um, and have their own space on the shelves. Thank you very much. Okay, so the next item is Elstree 1976, 90-minute documentary about the making of Star Wars, written and directed by John Spira. Other than that, I know very little about it. It does feature some of the characters from the Star Wars franchise. You've got Paul Blake, who played Greedo. And you've got Jamie Bullock, who was Boba Fett in Empire Strikes Back. Garrick Hagen, who played Biggs Darklighter in The New Hope. And of course, David Prowse, who is Darth Vader himself, like the body of, not the voice. And Angus McGuinness, who was Gold Leader as well. And this is going to go in my documentary section, and I look forward to watching it. Thank you again, Phil. Appreciate it. So the next one Phil has sent me, as if that wasn't enough already, is Superman, the complete animated series from Warner Brothers. This ran from September 6, 1996 through to February 12, 2000. It's got all three seasons. A massive runtime of 1,138 minutes. This really is above and beyond film, really is. It's a six disc set and I believe it's a 25th anniversary series. Tim Daly is the voice of Superman, AKA Clark Kent. You've got Dana Delaney as Lois Lane, Clancy Brown, brilliant actor. He's Lex Luthor in this. We've also got uh, Von Perlman, Willie, uh, William H. Macy, Michael Ironside, Malcolm McDowell. There's far too many to mention all of them, but it does capture a lot of Superman's early history and it's um, you've got like the art deco style of the 30s from the Fleischer Brothers cartoons right through to modern Superman. It does cross over into the Batman universe which we all now know is the same universe thanks to the Justice League bringing that to light. So you do see Batman himself and the villains that he has to deal with like Harley Quinn, Bane, Joker which is voiced by uh, Mark Hamill and there's also the Green Lantern in this Aquaman Flash. So that's really interesting to me that they've crossed it over. Let's open this one up and take a look inside. For inside, I will come to the leaflet in a second, but there is artwork on each of the discs. It is the same artwork, but the discs are numbered, and there are six discs in total. And there's an episode guide and information as to the extras as well. So that was awesome, Phil. That is the Superman Complete Animated Series. Can't thank you enough for that. I really cannot. So the next item that Phil has said, and it's still sealed, it's a Walk in the Sun war film made in 1945, year the actual war ended. It stars Dana Andrews, Richard Conti, who actually worked with Andrews previously on The Purple Heart, the year before in fact. Lloyd Bridges is in this, he's uh, Father de Beau and Jeff Bridges, narrated by Burgess Meredith, who was the Penguin in the 60s TV show, and he was also Mickey Goldmill in the Rocky franchise, he was Rocky's trainer. Now this follows a platoon of men who are going to land at a beach in Italy and make their way inland. Unfortunately, things don't go to plan from the off. The command leaders are picked off by the enemy. As a result, the people under them are not coping very well with the pressure. Based on the book of the same name by the author Harry Brown Jr., who went on to write Ocean's Eleven, which also starred uh, Richard Conti, the 1960s version that is. 
It's got a runtime of 117 minutes. Let's uh, open this one up as it's sealed and take a look inside. So it's a two disc set. You've got the Blu-ray here and the DVD here. The next film Phil has sent me is Fahrenheit 451. It's a steel book. It's a British film with a French director at its helm, Francois Truffaut, one of the founders of the French New Wave film movement. This was his first feature film that was in colour and it stars Judy Christie from Dr. Zhivago, which was made the year before this one, and Oscar Werner from The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. He's also worked with Truffaut before on Jules and Jim. Oscar plays Guy Montag, who is employed by the government to search and find books and then destroy them. Now, he meets a teacher called Clarice, who is played by Christie, and she persuades Guy to read some of the books instead of just burning them, which he does, and he hides some books in his house, much to the annoyance of his wife, Linda, who's also played by Christy, in fact. This is the only film Truffaut made that was in English, and the title refers to the temperature in which paper burns. It shows a society that's living and not enjoying, so I think most people can relate to that. It reminds me of the Christian Bale film Equilibrium from 2002, and to be fair, it does take some of the ideas from this film. The story is based on a book by Ray Bradbury of the same name and the film itself is 112 minutes long. Let's open it up and take a look inside. So there's beautiful artwork on the disc but they've put no inner art in. So the final title the film sent me is Harry and Snowman, a documentary telling the story of Harry DeLeo, a Dutch immigrant who rescues a horse named Snowman who would have been euthanized if it wasn't for Harry. Harry took that horse which was a plow horse on a farm uh, heading for the slaughterhouse and took it to greatness. Within two years, the pair won the show jumping triple crown and eventually with Snowman's name ending up in the show jumping hall of fame. What a great story that is. He even appears on the Johnny Carson show um, and has his own fan club as well. Harry bought Snowman for $80 from Pennsylvania in 1956 and trained Snowman himself. Snowman was eight when he bought him from the farm and he lived to the ripe old age of 26. Can't wait to give this a watch. Thank you again, Phil. This has been a beautiful surprise. I always say to people, you don't have to send me films because I've got loads, but it's always a pleasant surprise when I do get subscriber mail. So thank you very, very much. So it's time to put the slip cover away from Taboo and listen to this. That's a great sound. That's like a Rolls Royce door closing. And look at this one. I'm missing Supergirl season two slip. That is so annoying. So the next box contains several unofficial releases, bootlegs if you prefer, and for this I have to thank Gary, who unfortunately has moved away from YouTube, but still, thankfully, has an Instagram account. So what did Gary source for me? Well, let's open this up, take a look. So what was it that Gary sourced for me? Well, this is a very popular film because I've seen a lot of people picking it up over the last week or so. It is, of course, The Village. This is an M. Night Shyamalan film, his sixth film, in fact. It's nestled between Signs and Lady in the Water, release-wise, made back in 2004. Never had an official release, so I've had to opt for this. If an official release comes along, this will go in the bin, without, without a doubt. It's a thriller with a twist, so no surprise there. And the film has divided audiences over the years. I really don't get all the hate for it. I really enjoy this film. It's got a unique story and a brilliant cast. Joaquin Phoenix, Adrian Brody, Bryce Dallas Howard... Sigourney Weaver, William Hurt, Brendan Gleeson, and Jesse Eisenberg. And of course, M. Knight does pop up as he does in all his films, a bit like Hitchcock used to. I won't go into the stories, so I might give something away. It's one of those films with a twist, as I said. It was nominated for Best Original Score at the Academy Awards, James Newton Howard being the composer. It's got a runtime of 108 minutes. Let's open this one up and take a look inside. So there was artwork on the disc. So that was The Village from 2004. So the next title is What If, it's one of the Disney Plus Marvel shows. I do have Disney Plus, but I wanted the physical copy just in case Disney decide to pull the show one day from their, their streaming services. I watched all of these, I thoroughly enjoyed them. Uh, episode one and three and the last two are the best for me, I would say, but they're all pretty good. I should mention that when I stopped my channel over Christmas, Gary sourced for me all the other Marvel shows and they're all good. Even my wife enjoyed these and she's not really into the Marvel Universe. I wasn't looking forward to WandaVision, but if I'm honest, it's one of the best shows. Loki was a lot of fun. Good to see uh, Owen Wilson doing something other than a sofa commercial. He's one of my favorite characters in that show, and I did watch them in order as well, and I had to pick my favorite out of the whole bunch. I would go for Hawkeye. That was a top-notch show. Hayley Steinfeld in this was absolutely perfect for the role. Anyway, let's take a look inside What If. So there is inner art. And there are two discs. And if you're unaware with the concept of this show, it's animated and it tells if there is a multiverse, all the possible outcomes of decisions made. So that was What If. 
So the last unofficial Blu-ray is Project Power, a science fiction action movie from 2020 starring Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, amongst others. Now, it's a story about this new drug that hits the streets of America and it gives the users the ability to have certain superpowers. Well, the drug's named Power, and that's where the title comes from. The drug itself is mixed with certain animal abilities that in turn is transferred to its user. For example, you've got Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, Frank Shaver. He uses a drug and it hardens his skin using the DNA of an armadillo or something like that. Makes him non-susceptible to bullets, knives, that kind of thing. This film was very popular when it's available on Netflix, which is where I first watched it. I'm not sure if it's still on there or not. Could be. It's got a runtime of 114 minutes. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. Let's open it up and take a look inside. So there's artwork on the disc and inner artwork. So that was Project Power, the unofficial release. Thank you, Gary. Next title to show you is from a subscriber. It's not subscriber mail, it's part of a trade that we did. He contacted me, I'm talking about Al Pearson on Instagram, contacted me and said, well, I'd like to do a trade. He was in CEX and he saw a TV show that I was missing. So we have uh, we traded films and what he has sent me is one that I was missing, Red Dwarf season 11, a British science fiction show consisting of 12 seasons and a film. This season aired back in 2016 and is made up of six episodes, which was filmed back to back with season 12. All the regular characters are back for this one. Craig Charles as Lister, Danny John Jules as the cat, Chris Barry as Rim and Hologram, Robert Llewellyn as Crichton. And as I said, there's only six episodes on this and during the episodes they do encounter another cat species, a female one, so you can guess where that's gonna go. They find themselves in this alternate reality in America where all technology is forbidden. Lister in one of these episodes has his kidneys stolen and Crichton has a midlife crisis. So this is such a funny show, I urge you to watch it. It's got an overall runtime of 170 minutes. Let's open this one up and take a look inside. So there are two discs, one has the episodes on, the other one has all the special features. And they've included the leaflet with merchandise on it. So that was Red Dwarf season 11. Thanks Al. Okay, so on to this week's new releases and the first one is Gift Horse. This is known in America as Glory at Sea. It's a film put out by Studio Canal and it was made back in 1952. It stars Trevor Howard and Richard Attenborough. Old Santa Claus himself, or Pinky if you'd prefer. It's a drama set during World War II and it follows the crew of HMS Ballantry as they set sail to France to destroy a German submarine base. The ship they're on was previously an American destroyer. It's part of a deal that was made up during the Second World War that America would supply ships to England in exchange for areas of land that we occupied at the time. For example, the western side of St. Lucia or the eastern side of the Bahamas. And these lands are on a 99-year lease to America and they will revert back to us in 2039. I knew I could squeeze in a bit of history somewhere. Now, HMS Ballantry was formerly the USS Whittier, but in the movie... Uh, it's HMS Lemington, which was previously USS Twigs, if that makes sense to you. film is 100 minutes long, and it's directed by Compton Bennett, who was actually born just 30 miles up the road from me in Tunbridge Wells. Let's open this up and take a look inside. So the slip and the cover are exactly the same. There's a leaflet advertising the Studio Canal newsletter on their website. And there is artwork on the disc. So that was Gift Horse from 1952. The next title was quite a surprise. I had no idea this was coming out today until I got the HMV this morning. It's a film I first saw on Amazon Prime and it's Infinite. This is a science fiction action movie from last year. Got a great cast. And I've got to say I enjoyed this film apart from one massive plot flaw, which I won't tell you what it is because it might put you off. Stars Mark Wahlberg, Chewie Tao, Edge of Four, Sophie Cookson, she was Roxy in the Kingsman films, Jason Manzoukas, Robert Friend and Dylan O'Brien. Oh, and Toby Jones as well. I might have mentioned that I do actually like that actor once or twice. Now, stories about reincarnation. Mark Wahlberg's character has lived many lives and he's picked up skills along the way. And what's more, these beings are aware that they've had previous lives and they meet up with fellow life travelers. But of course they're being hunted down and killed and their souls put into status by a man called Bathurst, played by Chiwetel Ejiofor. We put Friend as well, playing the same character, depending on what year you're in, in the film. It's a good action film, but I do remember the opening scene the chase scene in it is a little bit ropey CGI wise. Other than that, I do recommend it. This is 106 minutes long, well worth a watch. Let's open it up, take a look inside. So it's just a plain disc. So that was Infinite. Next and last is the big release of the week. It is Spider-Man No Way Home from 2021. Saw this in the cinema, thoroughly enjoyed it. The thing is, I don't want to delve into the story in case I give any spoilers away. Bravo to you if you did a review, spoiler free. It must have been difficult. Directed by John Watts, who directed Spider-Man Far From Home and Spider-Man Homecoming. And he's set to direct, allegedly, 
the upcoming Fantastic Four film as well, so that's good. Written by both Eric Summers and Chris McKenna, who wrote Far From Home, Homecoming, and um, Anna and the Wasp, and a whole host of other things. I'm trying to avoid the story at all costs. But if you're a fan of the Marvel Universe or Spider-Man in general, then you're going to love this film. And to be fair, most of you have probably already seen it. I mean, it took $1.88 at the box office, which is an obscene amount of money. It's got a runtime of 148 minutes, and... No way did it drag at all. I will say it's got Tom Holland in this as Spider-Man and Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, but that's as far as I'm going to go. Music is from Michael Giacchino, who has worked on many Disney Pixar films, winning his Oscar for the best original score in the animated film Up. This is phase four of the Marvel Universe. Anybody know how many phases there are going to be? I've got no idea. Anyway, let's open this one up now and take a look inside. Well, surprisingly, there is artwork on the disc. So that was Spider-Man No Way Home. So that is it. Have you seen any of those films or plan to pick any of them up or just want to leave a comment then do so down below and I will read every single one of them and I will try to respond if I have the time. Give the video a thumbs up, really does help the channel. Subscribe if you haven't, it's all free. Why wouldn't you? And on that note, all it's said to say is thank you so much for choosing my channel today and watching my video. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.